let me welcome you to this second session, which is meeting the community where it's at, data site strategic initiatives to support award project and sample workflows, which is a little bit of a mouthful. Um, but um, the, the idea of this session is that uh, data site members obviously manage uh, a number of different types of research outputs. And data site uh, really works with our community to support these resource types. And so the, this session is really going to sort of showcase three recent uh, data site strategic initiatives for, for grant awards, for projects, and for digital samples. Um, and we're going to start with uh, grant awards. And we have uh, Xiaoli Chen from data site who will who'll speak on that. And Xiaoli, I will let you introduce yourself and I will stop sharing. And over to you. Thank you so much, Rory. All right. Uh, welcome, everyone, uh, to this session. And uh, my name is Ali. I am the project lead of the Implementing Fair Workflow project. You might have already heard of it. Uh, we have uh, the project running for the past three, three years. Um, and uh, But for this session, I'm specifically go going to talk about uh, our recent, well, not so recent, but like uh, we have been working on it for the past almost a year. Uh, to prepare for the community to embrace using those IDOIs for awards. Um, before I go into all of our efforts around it, I want to clarify a little bit what, what's a word when we're talking about this in the data set concept. So we have this working description uh, on that says an award is an umbrella term for resources provided to individuals or organizations in support of research, academic outputs, or training endeavors. So for example, they can be a specific instance of funding or grant or investment, sponsorship, scholarship, recognition, or non-monetary materials. This uh, description is said to help the community uh, like scope whether uh, award is an appropriate resource type to use when you, you are uh, like deciding whether to apply or create DOIs for the entity that you're managing. Um, so as I said, in the Fair Workflow project, we have looked at all of the key activities within an entire research life cycle uh, that is like shown on this diagram. There are eight stages that we identified and uh, and how persistent identifiers, especially DOIs, can assist and facilitate, facilitate these workflows to make all of the uh, entities produced and outputs uh, discoverable, uh, findable, uh, accessible. So, and um, apply and deliver on, delivering on research Funding is one of these key activity and like it's when the, the starting point of a, uh, a many uh, research projects. So uh, in, in academic research and funding organizations, institutes and researchers spend a significant amount of time on managing and keeping track of funded works and these outputs. So creating a unique and persistent metadata records for funding through DOIs increase the transparency and enables discoverability of grant funding, and not to mention a great number of value adding services organization can build from those metadata. It's like following the same logic for research data sets, research funding um, DOIs can serve similar purpose. Um, and like some significant examples are uh, output tracking and also like uh, re more efficient reporting, uh, uh, alleviating some of the burdens on the researcher side. And many of these benefits uh, are summarized in this guide that we produced in the Fair Workflow project for funders to implement Fair Workflows and output tracking. So this uh, uh, report is co-authored by uh, Datasite, Crossref, and ORCID with input with uh, uh, from uh, ROAR as well as the Research Organization Registry and uh, uh, and the ARDC, uh, our good good friend at the ARDC and RAID team. So we want to find ways to support organizations that issue funding more directly uh, and create DOIs for these awards and grants. 
particularly when they are already DSM members. And in this uh, in this rep uh, report, this guide document, uh, we start with uh, describing the roles uh, the funders play in uh, advancing fair research processes uh, and the key uh, things they can already engage in uh, with, with regarding to uh, identifiers they, they should first and foremost know and maintain their funder identifier. This can be the raw, their raw IDs or uh, uh, cross site funder registry IDs. Uh, they can start, go ahead and create and manage uh, IDs for grants and awards. And uh, not only creating the award, but also providing the guidance uh, for the uh, uh, for researchers on how to utilize these awards so they can successfully cr um, create these uh, connections on the metadata level so we can have like uh, rip the benefit of them. And there also are very specific uh, uh, activities they can they can already adopt in this uh, uh, in this report, and I hope uh, we have already this a link for it in the chat that you can check it out. Um, so a little bit about funding information in DES and MedData currently. So um, we uh, since uh, data set uh, schema 4.0, um, we have already included the funding reference property as a distinct property to house the relevant information regarding uh, financial support re received in the process of creating resources that is being registered. And on the right-hand side, you can see the attributes of the uh, metadata fields in this element they include a uh, funder's name and funder identifier where you can input DOIs, their uh, DOI ISNI or ROAR ID, uh, where, and you can uh, further specify the identifier type, the scheme URI, and also the award number and award URI. Um, the award URI uh, is can be you know like uh, can be a link, can be any sort of uh, uh, link. Uh, URL put in there is a little bit of a wild west, but uh, like through uh, creating DOIs for awards, we were hoping to create more robust ways to link the and an output entity to the to the grant. Um, but current currently uh there's already aggregated nearly two million DOIs that have funding information attached and uh over uh, like uh, 118,000 works associated with funder identifiers. Uh that's the uh, raw ID or across our funder registry ID. Um this is established uh, this connection between the outputs and the funding organization. And as, as I said, as we introduce uh, like identifier DOI for awards, we also want to add in, uh, like establish the connection between the output and the grant itself on top of the organization that is issuing those grants. Um, we obviously uh, also aware there are uh, like grant IDs being uh, issued from our sister organization at Crossref through their grant linking system. And we want to uh, make sure that DESI uh, can also uh, provide unique value from our uh, service side. So we did a little bit of a metadata mapping exercise to compare uh, what we can offer with, uh, with Crossref um, grant ID uh, schema. So we did compare the targeting entity, the property, wh whether the property matches uh, to what degree and the requirements uh, and cardinality. And through this exercise, uh, generally we did, uh, we conclude that data size schema is flexible enough to accommodate the key requirements of capturing information about awards and grants. And based on this uh, finding, we did uh, launch a small piloting uh, operation with our partner organization, uh, including ARDC, the Commission for Research Information in Germany, uh, the GBIF, and uh, uh, the California Digital Library uh, to trial uh, uh, the creation of uh, award DOIs in their system and follow up with some interviews to collect their specific use case, the workflow they deployed, the uh, system integration they have used uh, and uh, the key barriers to adoption. 
Um, through these interviews, we identified a series of uh, very uh, real real world use cases, uh, in, including a by different type of uh, award issuing and managing organizations. So you can see uh, they have some overlaps, but um, but there are some distinct. Uh, cases, including registering uh, his historical records for grants to make them citable and discoverable. I use DOI to track outputs of funded projects to continuously track impact of funded work be beyond the funding period um, and aggregate award information issued by different sources uh, when this organization is working with different funders. Um, and uh, a transition from currently uh, implemented local identifier structure to DOIs as globally recognized and open uh, identifier system to register a prize and awards a schemes to support discoverability and also uh, provide DOI service for subsidiary offices to meet open science requirements. These are, uh, uh, yeah, like uh, use cases we have found. Obviously, there's going to be more as the community embrace uh, DOIs for awards. Um, and uh, some of the requirements we gather from these use cases can uh, and can be answered already by data schema. Um, so in terms of descriptive metadata, how organizations describe these awards and funding, uh, they need to specify the award type. Are they monetary? monetary? Are they infrastructure use? Uh, they want to uh, specify the funding organization who's, who's publishing this award information, the award date, issue date, coverage period, extension, etc. cetera, so different types of uh, date types. Uh, the award par uh, party and the awarded party um, dis distinguish these um, different uh, groups that is working on the awards and the subject area supported by the awards as well as geolocation of award D. Some award schemes uh, need this, um, are, are built around um, these concepts and these can already be accommodated by existing data uh, property. And as well as very important, the connection metadata that express the relationship of interest around the, the award entity, including uh, the award and the awardee relation, the umbrella funding and sub award relation, the award and supplement or extension relation, uh, and the award and output relation, and, and also uh, with other resources, whether it's used by the by the award uh, and or like a you know extension or the award inspired other types of research endeavor. This uh, relationship can also be captured. Uh, and finally, the award and funding scheme relation. This can be captured by our uh, related item uh, uh, property. So um, many of uh, these we have uh, we have taken out this re uh, requirement arise from the pilot and created an initial guide document for organizations that are already. Uh, ready to take action to create uh, DOIs for awards. Uh, and these include uh, specific metadata recommendations uh, and terminology uh, clarification. Um, and uh, so you can already put, uh, find these uh, document on our support site uh, if you are ready to tackle this challenge. Um, there are a number of considerations for adoption that we identified, um, including a specific landing page. So currently implementation for uh, award DOIs also require adopters to comply with existing landing page best practice. And that is to say each award DOI should resolve to an individual landing page that contains key metadata about the award. Um, and we also recommend uh, the organizations to really figure out the workflow on the creation maintenance uh, uh, of these DOIs, uh, the roles and responsibility in these workflows. And this helps to clarify the relationships included in this metadata. And finally, if it's like a bigger organizations and providing uh, a DOI service, uh, on behalf of like the uh, different offices that you should award, uh, it's important to um, uh, figure out the membership arrangement um, before before you take it on. So, um, in summary, uh, we are uh, DataSide DOI can already be registered. Uh, 
for awards issued by uh, our members um, and uh, the metadata schema can accommodate the majority of requirement uh, for award entities as currently is. We, uh, we do uh, are, working, uh, uh, are working on the addition of award to the resource type general controlled vocabulary in the data size schema to make this process easier. And uh, in the uh, schema 4.6 request for comments, we just published, you can still provide input uh, if you have any ideas. Um, there are more information on this resource type and uh, we welcome your feedback on that, as well as uh, more on how you want to use uh, DOI for awards in your, in your workflow. Not just like uh, when you run into uh, problems, we do really want to hear if you like want to pick it up and then starting to use it. Um, please, like uh, we're happy to hear from you and uh, how you use this. Um, so yeah, that's an overview for uh, words. And please let me know if you have any questions. Thank you very much, Shirley. Um, so yes, if you do have any questions for Shirley, please do use the the Q at Zoom Q and A um, functionality. Um, but uh, moving swiftly on, uh, I would like to ask uh, Sean Ross if you can share your screen. Uh, so Sean is from ARDC. He'll be talking about RAID and the partnership between uh, RAID and DataSight. And um, Sean, I, I leave you to introduce yourself and, and uh, take it away. Hey everyone, uh, my name is Sean Ross and I am the uh, product manager for RAID, the research activity identifier uh, at the Australian Research Data Commons. Uh, just very quickly, the Australian Research Data Commons um, is the, uh, the the leading e-research organization uh, in, uh, in Australia. Um, we're a government funded uh, organization aiming to provide Australian researchers uh, with advantage, comp competitive advantage through data. Uh, that's our uh, of what we what we do, but we are also engaged in a number of international uh, initiatives, and uh, we have a uh, part of what the ARDC does is uh, deliver PID services, persistent identifier services, um, including uh, data site DOIs. We're we're a, um, a consortium lead for uh, for data site DOIs, a handle service, IGSNs, which are another um, uh, data site uh, uh, service, and uh, most recently, RAID, the research activity identifier. Um, uh, I, I, I realize I should have put in another slide uh, here, one that I use quite frequently, which is what is the difference between a project and a grant? Uh, so maybe as just a bit of a segue from uh, Shali's uh, presentation before I start talking about RAID itself, I'll just give you the, the, the very short version of that, um, which is the way that we conceptualize it on a, uh, you know, on, 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 a, on a high level is that a grant is something you get and a project is something you do. Um, in a more practical sort of sense, um, in some disciplines, there's quite a close um, uh, uh, mapping of a grant to a project, but in a lot of disciplines, there isn't. So for example, my, my uh, academic background is as a historian and an archeologist, and in history, lots of people never win any grants or you know, very rarely win grants, um, but they you know, write a book every three years and, concept and conceptualize that as a project, right? Whereas in archeology, span it's kind of the opposite that I'll show you an example of a uh, of, of a raid I've been working on for an archaeological project that I've been involved with since, since 2008 that has had a series of grants uh, that it's won over time. So in many disciplines, there's not this sort of one to one relationship with projects and grants. And the final observation I'd make about that is that for the project, we're we're really looking at the the bigger picture, um, the longer term, like with this archaeology project that I've been on, it's been going for you know sixteen years or more. Um, we're we're trying to uh, capture the bigger picture of research and, and research inputs outputs. So with that a uh, bit of a, a preliminary out of the way, what does a raid look like? A raid is essentially a a, a basket or container of other persistent identifiers, um, plus a small amount of, of additional metadata, like a title, a description, uh, a subject area, keywords, some, uh, some, key, some information like that. 
so the the majority of uh of um raids metadata record for for a project consists of say orchids for contributors roars for organizations um dois for various kind of inputs and outputs data set software uh, uh, uh publications of course um uh, igsns for samples uh, and you know and and any any other PID that can appropriately um, uh, describe uh, uh, and identify uh, an object related to the related to the project. Uh, we do have we understand that there aren't PIDs for everything, so we do have some fallbacks um, for uh, for things like non traditional research outputs uh, and perhaps other things. Where there isn't a PID, we can do we can take an approach such as um, uh, using a link to a um, uh, to a web page that's been archived using archive.org, for example. So there are fallbacks for entities that don't have PIDs. So what's the idea behind a RAID? What do we want to do? We want to build out the network of things that are related to a project. Uh, including inputs, outputs, organizations, contributors, uh, other resources that are used, other uh, other outcomes that emerge from uh, from uh, a project, and we can relate one project to another in a hierarchical uh, way uh, to describe more complex research activities. So a project can have a sub project, um, it can have other kinds of related projects. It's just a named relationship between any two. Um, uh, any two raids. So, um, what are we doing with data site uh, then? Um, we, you know, just in the past, over the course of the past uh, year, we've started this strategic um, partnership uh, with data site to deliver uh, deliver raids. And uh, I'll, I'll take a couple of slides to clarify what we're doing. And I think this will also give you a, a, an additional idea about um, the capacity of uh, and utility of raid. So. Um, essentially, uh, so what will, uh, to, um, differentiate a bit again, between RAID and grant, um, uh, identifiers or other kinds of project identifiers, because you can get a project identifier just as a, um, uh, as a, as a, uh, um, a, 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 a I don't know quite what we're to use normal typical uh, data site DOI, but RAID has developed a number of specific features. One is that we've, uh, uh, through extensive business analysis with potential users, um, we have our own metadata schema um, that uh, we've developed that we, that uh, um, is customized specifically for projects and the needs of of projects. Um, we another thing that we do that uh, that most other persistent identifiers don't really do is multi-party administration, uh, meaning that typically a project has more than one person involved, often more than one organization. So we provide a mechanism for a project lead to grant or deny access to a project to uh, you know to particular people, whether those people are researchers on the project uh, or whether they're administrators at one or another of the, um, the research organizations that are involved with the project. Um, and we can manipulate those two things, who's a contributor versus who has access separately. Um, the uh, another thing we've designed raid so that it can evolve with the project very easily and of course you could version a, 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 you know a, a, a deal any doi uh, but what we've done is built into the raid system um and uh, sort of automated versioning when you make changes a new version is uh, uh is created um, we bundle up a certain number of changes and, and and make a new version for you in the background without you having to do anything. And this just gets uh, it, it stays under the same uh, DOI, uh, but it um, uh, 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 but it um, lets you go back and look at the the changes, and they just have a simple incre incrementing uh, number. Uh, another thing that we found during our um, uh, business analysis as we were designing uh, RAID, our requirements gathering was uh, that it it was quite burdensome for some people, some organizations, to organize a landing page. So the RAID system um, generates a standardized landing page, and uh, if I, what what we heard repeatedly when we were doing our requirements gathering for for raid a couple of years ago was that uh, 
that users wanted to raid to be like Orchid, but for projects. And so that's kind of what we've been um, a aiming at. Is a, that's a shorthand way of uh, of of, of uh, uh, thinking about it. I think. Uh, and another, uh, finally, it, RAID is set up as a um, federated system um, with the uh, Australian Research Data Commons is a global res uh, is the global registration authority under an ISO standard for for RAID, uh, and we recognize. Um, uh, registration agencies around the world, and we're setting those up now. Um, uh, uh, we're working with organizations to set those up now, uh, and each of those registration agencies then can customize the uh, the metadata uh, fields that they use to a certain extent. Some things have to stay aligned with the global system, but we give room for some experimentation uh, and customization for particular communities there. Um, and just to you know, perhaps clarify uh, how RAID and DataCite uh, work together, um, RAID is its own separate system. Uh, you, and to get RAIDs, you interact with the RAID system. Um, when you mint a RAID through that system, you uh, you uh, request a DOI and submit a metadata excerpt, and uh, and the um, the DOI is then attached to the RAID. So we're a separate system from data site, but we take some of our metadata, map it to the to, to the uh, data site metadata schema, and submit it to uh, submit it to data site. Uh, and just organizationally, uh, very quickly, the ARDC is. Um, uh, it has a separate consortium, separate to our, 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 our um, uh, normal uh, data site consortium for Australia. We have a separate consortium set up for uh, for RAID uh, as a consortium lead, and each of our registration agencies is um, uh, is a consortium organization in that. So. We think that together this produces a robust and scalable, um, you know, uh, identifier, um, uh, reliable, project-specific, persistent identifier for the data site community and you know and and beyond. Um, and this uh, approach of um, uh, of aligning with data site has really uh, advanced or jump started our integration into the uh, into the broader PID uh, ecosystem uh, and um, uh, accelerated our own uh, our own development. We can rely on data site for a number of things that we don't have to develop ourselves um, now. So. Um, I'm hoping to save just a few minutes at the end to show you, uh, uh, you know, a raid a risk of doing at, at the risk of doing a, um, a, 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 a live demo on a webinar. We'll see how that goes. Uh, but before I do that, just very quickly, we you can get uh, raids now. We're still building out our global network of registration agencies with um, uh, SURF in the Netherlands being the first of our uh, registration agencies. They're coming online shortly um, and have a working instance of our software, and that's all going very well. I'm, in fact, in the Netherlands now meeting uh, with them later today. Um, you know, and... Um, uh, but if you're if you're not in Aust if you're in Australia, you just come straight to the ARDC. And if you're in Europe, uh, we could facilitate your uh, um, a, a connection with uh, uh, with Surf. But if you're el elsewhere in the world, we are talking to RAs, potential RAs um, uh, elsewhere. But until they come online, um, the ARDC is going to is willing to work directly with uh, organizations around the world. So if your organization wants to issue raids to uh, uh you know to staff to researchers uh talk to us and uh and, and we will work that out for you we're also uh, and this is a little bit longer term probably next year 2025 um we're working with osf to integrate raid with osf so that individuals who's you know who perhaps aren't affiliated with an organization uh, that offers raid can uh can get raids that way um and now let's see how this uh, uh, if this works, I will show you uh, what the RAID system uh, looks like very briefly in like maybe one minute on each of these things um, that. So hopefully that screen share still works. Um, 
this is uh, the RAID, uh, you know, et uh, editing system uh, here. And this is a, a, a RAID that I, so you would log into this system. Uh, it supports Google login and a number of other uh, types of standard uh, identity uh, uh, providers. You log in here. And it gives you access to a to particular raids. As I said, you you can be invited that uh, access is controlled to each um, uh, to each raid. You. Uh, if you hit edit, which I won't do right now, but it, it, it looks just like this, except the fields are editable. You can edit your titles. Uh, you get multiple titles. Uh, you say a full title and acronym. You get descriptions. Uh, everything is coded by language. Um, so I've got a, a shorter description and a longer description here. Um, you can put in uh, objectives. A lot of projects you know need to report on objectives, and then contributors go in as orchids uh, with an administrative role, uh, and also, which I probably forgot to put in here. Let me just see. You also you we use the credit ontology for substantive roles. So are you know, did you help with writing? Did you help with conceptualization? Oh yeah, there, there, uh, there and those are listed here. Um, and this gives you the idea uh, of of what or how a raid uh, works with PIDs. We are going to add display names uh, so that there's a human readable name to this. That's in probably our in in uh, uh, in the next month uh, or so. Um, and uh, uh, I I had to kind of uh, that again. We mostly use DOIs. Um, I had to talk to the developers about a piece of uh, of, of uh, validation that they did, but this is uh, uh, what uh, you can also put in web archive things. So this uh, is subject. Sean, I'm very sorry to interrupt you. Um, I think we really do need to. Oh, sure. Wrap okay. Up soon. <laughs> sure. Okay. No. No problem. Uh, this is what I wanted to show anyway, and you get JSON out uh, if you want to interact this on a machine to machine uh, level. So um, that's. Uh, yeah, I think that that's uh, enough then, and I'll let uh, I'll stop sharing and let um, Rory take over again. Thank you. Yeah, I'm I'm really sorry about that, Sean. It is very interesting, and I mean, obviously, people can contact you and find out more information. Um, so yeah, uh, once again, if you have any questions for Sean or for Shaoli, please put them in the in the Q and A. Um, and I would like to welcome our final speaker of this session, uh, Volta Adinkt who is uh, from the Distributed System of Scientific Collections. And this might be something you're maybe a little bit less familiar. Sean mentioned our partnership with the uh, International Generic Sample Number Organization. So this is a, a sort of a new one along the, the lines of um, uh, digital specimens. So um, yeah, I'm hoping that uh, this will be a very large interest to our community, uh, learning about the strategic uh, partnership we've do developing with DISCO. So please, Volta, um, the floor is yours. Please introduce yourself and, and uh, share your slides. Thank you, Rory. Uh, let me go to the slides. Okay. Um, yeah, my name is Walter Adink from Naturalis uh, Biodiversity Center in the Netherlands, and I'm uh, leading the technical development of uh, DISCO. Um, DISCO is uh, a new research infrastructure uh, under construction uh, in uh, Europe, and we, uh, we aim to be uh, become operational in uh, 2026. Um, we are currently in a transition process uh, towards that. Um, it is about uh, scientific collections, that is about botany and zoology collections, but also about uh, collections in many other scientific disciplines, like anthropology, uh, astrogeology for, for things like meteorites, geology, uh, paleontology, uh, but also uh, eDNA samples and, and microbiology uh, objects. Um, Basically, a specimen is uh, a, a, a sample uh, from nature uh, in, in most of the time, uh, but that is preserved for further study uh, in, uh, in a museum or in a, in a laboratory. Um, DISCO is, uh, is a big endeavor. It is uh, currently uh, has more than 170 uh, national facilities involved in 23 countries all over Europe. Um, 
in this code, we want to use uh, DOIs for what we call distal specimens and, uh, and their distal media. And what's a distal specimen? A distal specimen is a, is a distal object on the internet that contains all the information uh, that we, we have about the specimen, the physical object in the collection. Um, and that distal specimen, that distal object needs to get a, 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 an identifier. Uh, which is different from, for instance, an, uh, the, the uh, International uh, General Sample Number, which is an identifier for the physical object. So we aim to have always a one-to-one -one relationship between the digital um, specimen and the physical object stored in a collection. Um, you, can, you can see that as uh, uh, a... Um, this dot twin of the of the specimen. Um, it contains data, but it can also contain uh, relationships with data hosted elsewhere, uh, like DNA sequence information, uh, trait information, uh, um, information about uh, the uh, chemical composition. Uh, but it can also uh, contain models and even uh, even software uh, to emulate the uh, the specimen. Um, we have minted a, uh, a few DOIs already for distal specimens, although our distal specimen infrastructure is still under construction. And this is an example here. Um, and uh, our forecast is that we need DOIs in the millions. Um, there are about 2 uh, billion um, specimen objects in collections worldwide. Uh, although uh, DISCO is European-based, uh, uh, we, we aim to, to provide DOIs for all the collections in, in the world as a service to the global community. Um, but we will not create the digital specimens uh, that, uh, that should be linked to uh, from the DOIs for all the collections, only for, from, the, from the European collections. So only the European collections get a landing page from, from DISCO. Other organizations would need to provide the landing pages for other parts of the world um, for that. Um, we are working towards a strategic partnership uh, with, uh, with data sites. And um, as soon as we have more information about the costs uh, for minting uh, in the hundreds of millions a year, of the UIs with, with that side, we can uh, fully establish that strategic partnership. Um, in the first phase, um, we have uh, a, uh, sorry, a preliminary uh, st steps uh, discussed to initiate the partnership and set the direction for collaboration. And we have set up uh, a temporary solution for uh, minting the UIs that, uh, that fulfill the needs of uh, of DISCO. And in phase two, we will scale that partnership uh, to meet the specific needs of, of DISCO by integrating, by uh, modifying the, um, uh, the, disc, the data site uh, infrastructure. Um, so some DISCO specific needs. So we need large quantities of, of DOIs. Um, so there are around 250 to 500 million objects uh, digitally available already that could get a DOI um, and uh, that uh, amount is growing by about 15 uh, million a year uh, because of digitization projects. Um, we have a need for short and opaque identifier strings and that's because the DOIs will need to be used both by machines but also by humans. Um, and we want them uh, persistent. Uh, collections can exist uh, for hundreds of years. Some collections are already uh, 300 years old. Um, and we need these uh, digital specimens and their identifiers to exist also uh, for centuries. Uh, so they should not contain any semantics and they should never change. Uh, we have a need for some domain-specific metadata. Um, we did a matching already. Um, uh, for uh, our metadata with the data site uh, metadata schemas. Uh, this is important because we want to use um, data site services like the 
uh, uh, cross sites uh, citation formatter so that people can uh, refer to uh, to uh, specimens to the DOI in, for instance, material citations in uh, in publications. Um, we need to have the metadata in the PIT record, and that's not what is usually done in DOIs, but it's possible. Um, both to meet uh, requirements for fairness to objects, uh, fairness to objects um, um, is a specification and a, and a construction for uh, for sharing digital objects uh, that are also fair. Um, this means that they need to have an identifier and some metadata. And by attaching the metadata uh, to the PIT records, to the handle records, um, we are uh, we make it very easy. Uh, first of all. Uh, to take over uh, the uh, DOIs in the future, if maybe 100 or 200 years from now, uh, data set would no longer exist, then another uh, registration agency under the DOI Foundation could take that over. But also it, uh, it makes it uh, very easy for machines to uh, find out whether the object is, is of interest without having to, uh, to redirect to the full, uh, the, the landing page with the full data about the object. Um, that metadata also contains um, some information to support the full life cycle of a specimen so that this, the uh, identifier can attach already uh, at collection in the fields before the, um, the uh, object is uh, preserved in, in a collection in the museum. Um, and it also contains uh, information for, for machines, um, uh, what structure uh, is offered at the landing page. So landing pages will uh, always be offered both in a human readable version in HTML, but also in uh, serializations that can be used uh, by machines like a JSON serialization. Um, and uh, the schema for that uh, is, uh, is defined in the metadata. And also the operations that can be uh, carried out by a machine are defined there. So a machine knows uh, what it can do with the digital objects. Um, and uh, what we currently do is we create a DOI at the time of creation of the digital specimen object. Um, so first we create a digital specimen and then we create a DOI uh, so that we uh, can include the um, uh, the redirect to the digital specimen landing page. Um, we have worked out a temporary solution uh, because uh, currently uh, the uh, data sites has a um, a metadata store that uh, stores metadata separate from the uh, from the DOI, and we want to to uh, have that included. And also we uh, need to make sure that we can mint uh, large numbers of DOIs very fast because uh, in some years we need to mint hundreds of, uh, of DOIs. Um, so uh, Disco has set up a, uh, a local handle server. And basically we have two a local handle server, one for uh, our uh, internal handles that we use in our infrastructure and one for the DOIs. Uh, we got a prefix from from data site. We uh, we became a, a data site member, um, and um, so an external uh, party can go to data site uh, as the as an as an agent, and um, we created the the digital specimen and the DOI for that, um, and then we after a creation we. Uh, publish the metadata also in the data site uh, metadata store. Um, so that is an asynchronous process, which means that um, the metadata may not immediately uh, be available in the data site services, uh, but eventually it will be, uh, be there as well. Um, we have some specific uh, features. Um, so we have discussed, should we call um, our digital specimen DOI something different, like a natural science identifier, but um, DOI is well established as a brand in our community. So we just call it a DOI and it is basically just a DOI, uh, but it has some, some specific uh, features. Uh, so it has, uh, it supports uh, multiple redirects. 
um, which means that you can uh, have multiple views of the digital specimen. Um, and uh, these views can be uh, an HTML view and, and JSON view, but also if the if we have a resolvable uh, identifier a URL that points to the a local catalog of an institution that hosts the specimen, we can also uh, redirect directly to that, uh, that catalog uh, by appending uh, an attribute um, uh, with, with the view that you are interested in. Um, then we have digital specimens as mutable objects. That means that uh, they change over time. They can be annotated uh, and, and changed by both machines and humans. Uh, so they are versions objects. Uh, we store all the versions. And um, by default, the DOI points to the latest version of the digital specimen, but you can also use it to go to a specific version by appending uh, a version number to the, to the URL. Um, we also are working on third-party integrations. Um, we have one publisher now uh, that integrated um, uh, the digital specimen DOIs in their journal publishing system in ARFA. Um, and what they do is they use uh, the metadata in the in the PIT record to show a um, tooltip uh, in the journal. So if you have a publication in the journal and you are using uh, uh, digital specimen DOIs to refer to a, a specimen object, then um, you can uh, immediately see some metadata uh, for, that, uh, for that DOI that is in the handle record. Uh, and that helps the, the reader of the journal a lot to, um, to know immediately whether that is uh, the DOI of the object of interest. So we can see where that uh, specimen is hosted, uh, what the name of the specimen is and what kind of specimen it is. And uh, yeah, that's what I have to uh, to say. So some acknowledgements, uh, acknowledgements to uh, the development uh, team in, in Disco uh, and also to uh, to data side for uh, our fruitful discussions uh, on on creating a partnership with them. Thank you so much, Volta. That's really great. I really appreciate uh, you leave, leaving us a couple of minutes left as well. So we 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 do have five minutes left for some some questions. So if um, Shirley, Sean, you also want to turn your uh, cameras back on, that would be. Wonderful. And Walter, if you could stop sharing as well so that we can maybe see everybody in gallery mode. That's beautiful. So um, there's a question for Sean um, in the, the chat, uh, which is, uh, is there any synergy between RAID and other research information schemas or services such as Vivo? So uh, Vivo, I'm not, I, I, I'm, uh, you have to forgive me, I'm not aware of, uh, but we are working with, um, we've started working with digital science, for example, to get it integrated into, uh, in the first instance, Figshare, and we hope in the longer term, um, Sorry, I work at a at a at an Elsevier shop. Uh, the uh, the current research information system of um, digital sciences uh, dimensions. Sorry. Uh, so yes, we we're we're quite like a API first development. Yes, we we have a web app where you know individuals can um, you know can can update rates manually. But our goal is to get integrated into other systems. Oh, and I guess I should the, uh, our pilot for that is it with the EOS marketplace uh in europe so if you apply for resources to the EOS marketplace you'll be once you enter your project information which they collect anyway you will be given the opportunity to create a raid so yes our our, our goal is is that you interact directly with raid through the web app only as a fallback Okay, thanks, Sean. And we had a question that that uh, Shirley's already answered, but it seems quite uh, quite complicated to a certain degree. So it was um, from uh, Nikolai uh, Nikolai uh, Sharbek. Um, Shamabek, I apologize for mashing up your name. How do you ensure that the information about an award is up to date? So you've you've given quite a, a lengthy answer there, Shirley. Would you like to elaborate a, a little bit? 
yeah, apologies for being uh, you know, wordy there, but uh, essentially, uh, it it's is a DOI for a word is a is similar to a DOI for any other type of resources that we maintain at that side. We rely on our members who create the DOI to keep them up to date. Um, but one uh, uh, maybe like uh, uh, what a word DOI is, uh, is different for, from other type of entity is that uh, uh, once an award is issued, there. Uh, we expect there to be very minimum changes to what this uh, what this is. Um, it's like it's going to go into a, a award agreement with different parties there, and uh, what changes we expect the changes to be. Uh, the award will continue to be linked to outputs coming out of the work that's being funded, and that that part uh, we rely on the researchers and the teams that work on these uh, work to to include the award DOIs as they share uh, like uh, share their outputs throughout the the period of the funded period so um the award DOI creators would worry more uh, worry less about uh, changing the metadata of the award DOI metadata but what they need to pay attention really is to instruct uh, the the awardees how they can efficiently use those DOIs uh, to acknowledge the funding sources. That will be the answer. Thank you very much, Shali. So we have run out of time. So I want to thank our speakers again and thank you all for joining us and just quickly say, uh, that this is far from the end of the Datasite Annual Community Meeting 2024. We do have plenty of sessions upcoming, so please do um, register for those of interest if you've not done so already. And finally, yes, um, as you leave, you will be given the, the short follow-up survey, and we'd really appreciate you answering those three questions um, and giving us your, your feedback. So, yeah, it just... Once again, thank you so much to our speakers and thank you all for, for coming and joining us today. Um, and we'll see you at uh, later sessions in the Data Site Community Meeting. Take care, everyone.